Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the new Gladiator Beast support, Gladiator Beast Noxious. Now, I believe this comes out in Code of the Duelist. I can't remember exactly what set this comes out in, but this card is actually just fantastic. Now, there were a couple different options I had for what I could have played. Uh, I could have played uh, Gladiator Beast Zoo, which is a deck that I have tested, and I'm actually kind of a fan of because of the fact that, you know, your Zoo cards inherently directly mesh well with and support your zoo plays uh, or your glad beast plays the deck is a lot more proactive uh, because you're just constantly doing things like trying to Xeris your opponent or you're trying to uh, do zoo plays and dry it into your opponent it's very reactive but also very proactive and this deck seems a lot more reactive than it is proactive but still it's something I wanted to try because it's it's not a zoo variant uh, and that seems to be something that people appreciate a lot more on the channel as of now but Gladiator Beast Noxious, if you do not know what this card does, it's when an opponent's monster declares a direct attack for, uh, you can special summon this card from your hand, and so it's it's a battle trap, essentially, and if you do, change the attack target to this card and perform damage calculations, so whatever attack was happening, that battle now has to take place with this card, and this card cannot be destroyed by that battle, so it can't be destroyed by a battle once per turn uh, from that battle that you, uh, that you respond to with it. And then, if it was special summoned by a Gladiator Beast Monster's effect, including itself, you can send a Gladiator Beast Monster from your deck to the graveyard, so it sets up a Darius play. And then, at the end of the battle phase, if it battled, which it did, in order to summon itself, and it wasn't destroyed by that battle, uh, it can be shuffled back to the deck to tag out for another Gladiator Beast. So essentially, uh, you can special summon this from your hand, send Bestiari or whatever to grave, and then tag it out in the end of the battle phase for Darius, and that's immediately a Geyseris play, like at the start of your very next turn. That's actually just really cool, uh, and it's really uh, something that Glad Beast kind of needed in terms of a really, really good card to like help support them. Like Augustus was the most recent like monster support they got, and while Augustus was good, it's definitely not what uh, what the deck needed. Noxius is definitely one of those cards that just fits so hand in hand with the theme. That's just really good. But anyway. Uh, this is Gladiator Beast Invoked. I believe this deck is a lot more reactive than the uh, than the Zoo deck is, so I don't know if I'm going to particularly like it nearly as much. Nor is am I sure that this game play is going to be anywhere near as like proactive. I could easily play with the Zoo variant uh, at a later date, like a little bit later, a few days later, just to show you guys what I mean as far as how it's more proactive uh, than this deck is. But regardless, let's not yammer on too much more about this, and let's just jump straight in. To the game shall we so let's see how this thing operates all right so let's see how this goes okay amazing I get to start that's great that means that I can potentially do fucking hell how many terraformings does one man need I'm about to activate fucking all of them there's no reason at all for me to hold any of them you know what? I'm gonna activate a second one I'm gonna set one as a bluff <laughs> you know, we're gonna get some value out of this I could have set both but uh, we're not we're not fucking around with that we're not going to, uh, we're not going to risk drawing one off this possibly juicy maxi. I've got the Noxious in my hand, which is really good. Uh, that means I don't have to commit to, uh, this Alistair, uh, going to grave, the Alistair. Uh, I can get the, uh, Invocation here. And I play two Invocations in my deck. So, honestly, I'm kind of fine with just setting Terraforming and setting the Invocation, if that seems, if you, if you find that strange, I'm sorry. Um, I, it might be strange. <laughs> I mean, the simplest plus one just happened. Uh, plus two, actually, because I'm, uh, I'm at seven cards. Uh, but so then, like, even if this gets, like, twin twistered and then this dies, I'll be able to reckless magic circle or magical meltdown into another thing. But really, he's just not doing anything. Okay. Um, I can respect that. I can respect his wishes to not be defiled. Um, I can make fucking Castell, but ugh. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to just normal summon the bestiary and we're going to poke whatever the fuck this is. Uh, like a respectable gentleman, we're going to poke whatever this is. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see, Noxius is dark too. Like, why couldn't it be like a more relevant like attribute? Uh, that's, that's the thing that I'm kind of trying to come to grips with here is that it's not even like the most relevant attribute. Uh, so I'm curious as to what deck he's playing where he just sets a card and passes. A Miss Valley Baby Rock. There's no way he's trying to play my deck. There's no way in hell. Mm -mm. This is what you get for trying to play my deck. If that is the pre if this is the precursor of you playing Dragoonities, then this is what you get. <laughs> you deserved this. 
<laughs> um, but so what we can get now is that there's nothing really worth getting except maybe just getting a pumped up Laquari. I mean, um, I could get Noxious, which would be pretty cool because I could use Noxious to dump a card and then uh, from there the Noxious in my hand would be able to do stuff. Uh, possibly. Uh, it's a dark though, so it doesn't do anything. Fuck! Um, you know what? Yeah, we're just going to get the Noxious. And we're going to use Noxious here uh, to specifically dump uh, one of the best DRAs to grave because there's two in this list. So I'm fine with that. Uh, I can activate this. I can banish a bestiary. I could. Um, I can banish the Elaster. Um, the problem I have with this list over something like, say, Gladby's Zoo, is that it's not nearly as proactive with your glass with your like Glad Beast cards, and that's kind of irritating. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get a search for another Elaster uh, here uh, because that just seems fine to just put in my hand and cycle that out. Uh, and then I could do some really weird shit next turn, so we're gonna just leave it at this. I've got the Noxious in my hand, which I don't think is gonna actually, like, resolve at this point, but if it does, then I mean, fucking brilliant, amazing. Um, but otherwise, there's no way. There's no way that this Baby Rock means that he's playing Dragoonity cards. He is! He's trying to be saucy. He's trying to hit me with my own special secret sauce. Um... Look at this tribute for Hyrat. That's why you bricked. You're playing the you're playing the Hyratic cards. You're playing the yeah. You're playing those. That's sure. Pop the terraforming. That's fine. Uh, I'm gonna max see you here though. So you're playing Hyratic Dragoonity with all of these bricky cards with the Gerudos and the Baby Rocks and all that shit in it. This shit doesn't work anymore. This is not how this goes. And he summoned Labrador White Dragon from hand. A special tech, a special set, a special another Sue. All right, I can respect it. Um, summon another vanilla from your deck. This is what you get for trying to play my deck, you bastard. Me and you talk about this deck too infrequently for you to know all the special goo that's going on in my head for this deck. I cut the Hieratics a long time ago. Those cards are booty, 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 booty. You summon Tefnuit and you get dried and popped, and you're just like, well, I guess my turn ends now. It's, it's go first or go nothing with this deck now. Uh, so he's just going off into the back seat. He just does not give a single fuck. <laughs> Which is respectable. I guess I can understand it. Um, I mean, I'm playing Invoked. So, I mean, like, my turns aren't going to be that proactive. But the thing is, is, if he doesn't get rid of this Invocation that's face down, like, right now, um, I'm going to be able to Fuse twice on his turn. Uh, which means that I could do something like, uh, like, depending on if I get access into Laquarie, um, ah, he's got the Soul Charge too. What a master! The only thing that makes this suck for him is that he's playing the Hieratics. It's the only thing that makes this suck. There are so many better engines to play. The Hieratic cards were like really good for their time period, but now the time period has passed. Um, these were like the Hieratic cards were really good in the chicken game builds uh, because you'd be able to just play tons of turbo, tons of draw power cards, and that's all you needed. That's all you needed to mess around with. There wasn't anything else that needed to, to happen. Uh, so, <laughs> all right. Well, we're just gonna we're just gonna lay this down, uh, lay down this sick beat. Um, and so I can attack with Noxius to do zero, uh, and then we can do some shit. Uh, now I've got the Darius in my hand, which is kind of irritating. Uh, I've got a Ghost Ogre and a shit ton of traps. Uh, I can summon this Elaster. I can use its effect, and with its effect, I'm going to add this second invocation. Is there anything I can actually do here with like any of this stuff? Like that's the thing. Like this deck isn't as proactive as the uh, as the Gladiator Beast Zoo deck is because like with the Glad Beast Zoo deck, you're constantly going into your zoo your uh, zoo cards and getting your Glad Beast cards off of them. Uh, but with this deck, it just doesn't seem like proactive enough. So I don't really like it um, per se as compared to like the other builds, but. It's whatever. Uh, so we're gonna do this, and we're gonna banish. Uh, we're gonna banish the. Or no, I'm just gonna get rid of the ghost ogre. Is what I'm probably gonna do. Yeah, we'll just get rid of the ghost ogre. It doesn't matter. Um, or I could banish his cards. This is also something that's very valid. I completely forgot about that as an option. Actually, 100% forgot that <laughs> that I could do that. So I was so ready to just discard my ghost ogre in defeat. Uh, but no, we're, we're dealing with this like a real man. Uh, now I've already normal summoned, so I guess we'll just turn this to attack mode, and we'll go into the battle phase. I'm going to attack with this for literally zero. Um, 
and so that's fine. And now we'll attack with these, and then I'll tag this out into Sekitor because I've got uh, I've got like a Mirror Force card plus Dimensional Barriers and a Makaba. Um, so like that seems fine. I'm gonna keep the Twin Twister in my hand because I can let Makaba negate a spell if he top decks something like Raigeki. Not gonna try and mess with that. He can't top deck uh, Soul Charge because he just used that last turn. I feel so bad that like. I'm stomping upon him when he's trying to play my deck. He's trying to make it look good for me. He's trying to make it look pleasing to the eye. Uh, but ultimately, it's just it's past that point, man. Um, the most recent build of Dragoonies I have, like in fact, the most recent like four or five versions have not touched the the Hieratic cards because they're just uh, they're a special kind of something, if you know what I mean. <laughs> They're a special breed, if you get what I'm saying, of just uh, not working anymore in the deck. Like, that's what they do. Like, they're just, they're really bricky. Uh, and meanwhile, you can run other cards that just, like, advance your engine a little bit more, but it makes the deck more reliant on Dragon Ravine. It's this weird, like, jump. It's this weird jump that you go back and forth with, where, like, the Hieratic version, uh, like, loses to, um,. The Hieratic version loses to, uh, to, like, being really clumpy, but it operates better without Dragon Ravine, uh, whereas the, uh, the, uh, non-Hieratic versions, they very heavily rely on Dragon Ravine, <laughs> like, 100% rely on Dragon Ravine, cannot play without Dragon Ravine, uh, it's arguable. Uh, there are some other, like, instances where you are able to play, um without Dragon Ravine in certain builds, in the pure builds, uh, but like, hmm, really? Oh, I probably have all of my, yeah, the only Glad Beast monster left in my deck is like a Laquari, isn't it? No, I've got a Bestiari and a Laquari. Oh, at the end of the battle phase, never mind. I, for some reason I thought Sekutor was like, when it attacks you summon the two. Um, so like that, that was just my mistake. Okay, I was, I was kind of tripping for a second, I was like, oh, I guess I just don't have any targets for Sekutor left in my deck, which is... Sekitor is like the coolest card, especially with Noxious, because with Noxious, um, there's a couple different plays you have with Noxious. You can Noxious and uh, dump a card and then get Darius at the end of the battle phase, or you can just get Sekitor at the end of the battle phase and the next turn attack with it. So, I mean, there's a couple different plays you have access to. Uh, the Darius play is probably just better in a vacuum, like, overall. But still, man. Like, I feel so bad. He tried to play this deck because he just tried to... He was trying to hit me with some of my own style points. Uh, but unfortunately, his build is just a, uh, a tad bit outdated, but anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I'm probably going to be switching over to Glad Beast Zoo at some point. Um, I'll probably play another game or so with this because it doesn't really, it operates more as like a Glad Beast toolbox with the invoked engine carrying most of the deck, it seems like, and it just doesn't seem like it meshes really well. With like the Zodiac deck, it meshes really well, especially since you can search Noxious off of your bullhorns, uh, so like that's actually just like a huge interaction, but I'm just, uh, just going to continue testing things around, but be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the way to do so, as well as it gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon. I give away a significant amount of Kanali product. I'm not sure what this month is going to be. It might be just a couple like sets of the structure deck going out to certain people of the structure decks coming out uh have not decided yet or it might just be something else that is of a uh of a like high dollar amount or something but if you want to enter my discord server and play with me for games then definitely go check out the reward tiers on patreon as well because that is where iradium came from and that's where like 13 other people are currently situated where they talk with me on a daily basis and whenever i play games for people i play them from the discord specifically but if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've experienced thus far, but definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you if you're looking to acquire any cards that you've seen in my videos and all that sort of nonsense. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.